In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondocast. To the Vundacast, the official podcast of Vundablog.com, the home of where Red Shoes gets spat on and then still referees a fa- damn good match. He doesn't care. I don't care if they're spitting my eyes, I'm going to call this three count. Wow. Whoa. I am your host. That was like a. Yeah, yeah. I was like, ah, did you Red Shoes? Well, I, 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 I want to get away from the home of whatever, I think. Really? I'm finally... Let's get decisive. The home of... Go back to nothing is too... Something specific. Go back to nothing is too boring. I forgot about that logo there. Nothing's too... Um, I am your host, Steven, and we are live in the the Wrestling Temple with D-Rock... Uh, IGPW World Heavy 08 commentator? No, oh, I commentator. Uh, How's it going? I'll take, yeah, that's good. Um, good. So just, the, gonna, just uh, sat through uh, three different installments of Wrestle Kingdom 13. Well, ready to uh, do some heavy analysis and exegesis. Of, <laughs> of the wrestling. He's supposed to get exogenetic on this motherfucker. No, there's no... I don't think there would be any... Here. There's nothing spiritual about what just happened in that ring? I mean... He can only summon one air guitar, so... That's true. Yeah. So, actually, this is kind of interesting, because... I feel like now the podcast has seen, like, a, a growth of D-Rock's character here. Really? For when the podcast started, D-Rock was, was on the suckle teat... Of the World Wrestling Entertainment Organization. Oh, yeah. And then D-Rock has, has grown, yes. and he, like, you know, dipped his toe into into Lucha. And then Lucha Underground kind of, like, exposed yeah. him to more indie wrestlers. And now he's, like, full New Japan Pro Wrestling for life. I mean, I've always been, like, interested in the indie stuff. I just, like, never... There was never, like, uh, this efficient of, like, a delivery uh. system. <laughs> There was no IV to get this into my bloodstream yeah, yeah, yeah. in like, a WWE's on TV, reasonable so, like, manner. But yeah, no, WWE is just like, I've just lost interest because it's been so bad. And I've, everything I read online, because I haven't even been watching anymore. And everything I read about it online is indicates that like it's not getting any better. And I'm just like, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I kind of want to like... Try to get back into it. Like, I always... You gotta, it's always on my mind. You gotta like, get should it. Should I watch Raw? You've gotta get in should it. Should I watch Raw? Now Smackdown? we're approaching the prime WWE season. Well, right. It's, yeah. Because we're about we're to approach the, to Rumble the Rumble to yeah. WrestleMania. That's that the is, to tune in again. That is the best. That's when they're going to pull out all their, their biggest see cards. see who wins the Royal Rumble. And go from there. But yeah. And I've been watching NXT. Like, I'm following NXT pretty closely now. Yeah. He starts to do the marquee, the marquee stuff. And we're watching NXT. Yeah. <laughs> I thought about trying to catch up on NXT UK, but I think I might just, like, maybe start, like, so following NXT it. So, NXT UK is weekly as well? Is like Yeah, they have a weekly show now. Jesus. Mm-hmm. And that film was in the UK? Mm-hmm. So do they have like a performance center there, or it's just they, indie guys over there? I don't know what they, they they. I think they get like just indies wrestlers from other promotions. Like Rev Pro, I think is. I don't know if they're British based, 
Um, but there's a bunch of promotions that they get all these guys from that, you know, which is why everybody already knows them and stuff, so. And is it just that New Japan has such a more intense physicality and both, you know, yeah, adult big fight storylines? It, uh, like, it's, it, it takes some getting used to, because it's, like, a whole different, like, physics engine, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> for a wrestling promotion, because, like, WWE, like, people sell stuff way more than they do in New Japan, like, there's a, there's a lot, the, that, that strong style stuff comes along with, like, guys shrugging off moves more often than you would see in, like, North American wrestling, um... But once you get used to the fact that it's just a different physical universe, um, it's good. Like, like the wrestling itself is fucking, like, second to none. There's no arguing that. It's just, sometimes it's lower on story than I'd like it to be. And sometimes, like, I can't understand if there is a story... So, which is why I really hope that sometime in the not too distant future, NJPW World is going to start doing the the English captions over everything, over the VTRs, over the the press conference interviews yeah. and stuff. I don't, so that I I, I want to get invested in the story, and I can't. I don't think there's any reason why they can't do it on the pre-made videos. Like they're right. obviously making them in advance. It's, right. Exactly. Just a one more step in your production of them to get them translated, mm-hmm. or to even just give you a filter on your uh, right to have some on your thing where it's just auto default. And this is such going to give you your English subtitles that they're probably. I mean, they're probably going to have that within the next year, sometime. I would think. I hope Because they're so. trying to expand so much into the U.S. No. They're having all these shows yeah. in the U.S. They're going to do Dallas. They're going to do Chicago. Yeah. They're doing New York. They're doing that's, L.A. That's why, because Jim Ross, a few years ago, he used to be one of the voices of New Japan. Mm-hmm. But, he's, the, he's the voice of New Japan on when TV. they air it in the United on States. On Axis TV. On Axis. Yeah, yeah. But he was, what he was saying so was... he's not there. He, like, does it... He does commentary over, like, the recording yeah, shit. That's what I'm saying. He was saying that, that New Japan being able to have commentators live for American audiences that want to stream it and not be... Has, has improved their American presence. Yeah. Like, just for sure, giving yeah. them that option. That's another um, thing, too, like... Like I, I I love going back and it's like watching some of the the the, pro, the old matches that I've heard a lot about mm-hmm. and never seen before, but it's always with the Japanese commentary, which like the Japanese commentary is cool and I understand why people are like no you should listen to it because it's mm-hmm. it adds a lot to the match and it does, but like it still doesn't I can't I I don't get the story yeah. the way I would with with announcers that I understand so. And uh, this Wrestle Kingdom 13 review is simultaneous with Derek's top 10 New Japan. Oh, we're going to do. Oh, yeah. JPW list. I posted it. I posted it. Which is currently on (laughs) Vundablog.com. There you can see. There's a couple matches on this that are probably going to be on the list for 2019. Whoa. Already inductees. For sure. I mean, it's Wrestle Kingdom. You know, of course, it's got to be. There's always going to be match of the year candidates on Wrestle Kingdom. I was expecting something a little bit different because I saw Wrestle Kingdom last year, Wrestle Kingdom twelve, and I was expecting that this was the thirteenth Wrestle oh, yeah. Kingdom. They would lean into like something uh, like you know more thematic. You know, more what I mean? thematic. Huh. Like I wanted them to like because nothing yeah. from this Wrestle Kingdom looked that. Thematically different from last no. Wrestle Kingdom, they and I'm used to that. I'm used to WWE that like you know every WrestleMania has its oh, yeah, own no. like little aesthetic and design or something like yeah, that. Yeah, right. I just wanted like a fancier yeah. logo. It's, it's so much more of a like pro sports. Yeah, feel it's a fight. To it. yeah, yeah, it's like UFC they presentation. Don't, they don't really do that kind of stuff yeah. that much. And like you know, even like when you said that, I was like. This this Wrestle Kingdom was like pretty much 
not that different from the last, last year. No, no, it was right. In, in the matches, even like it was. I mean, other than like, I don't think as many titles cha- changed hands last, last year. year, but mm. still a lot did. But like, Kazuchika Okada retained. Um, I mean, well, Tanahashi lost the Intercontinental. I I think it was kind of cooler not having. Okay, so now we're reviewing it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I like the change of of not having the Battle Royale to start it out. I missed the Battle Royale actually. Yeah. I did. Yeah. I I liked. I I kind of appreciated the idea of having that be like the pre-show match that they do. And I yeah, I kind of wanted to see that. I I love that. For, for last year, because that was the first time I'd ever watched any New Japan, mm-hmm. and it totally, like, introduced you to all these, like, different kinds of wrestlers that mm-hmm. they have, some of the comedy acts and some of the other stuff but that I, you don't think of when you think of But I don't think they had time to give everyone, like, their own entrance, you know? Everyone just kind of no, came yeah. out in a mass group and stuff. So I think the but elim- they got to develop the ha- they had really. instead this year a gauntlet elimination trios which had a similar effect tournament but the fact that everyone was able to get their own yeah. entrances yeah it kind of made everybody stand out so it was a good intro for me to be like yeah. oh who's that guy that guy has a dragon on his face yeah right his name is Shango <laughs> it was a different man uh, yeah. and Robbie T uh, I think he was in that one right. So oh, Chucky e. T. Chucky e. T. T. There we go. Yeah. Number one contenders gauntlet ma- gauntlet match for the never open weight six man tag championships. So that started with Marty Skrull, Hangman Page, Yujiro Takahashi taking on David Finlay, Yuji Nagata, and Jeff Cobb. Jeff Cobb, Mister Matanza Cueto. Yeah, I never seen Jeff Cobb wrestle other than in his Matanza yeah. getup, and that was really. The first time I saw him was the G1 in San Francisco that I went to. Whoa. Which was which was very cool. It was a little underwhelming, but it was still really amazing to see, you know, all the all of my favorites in person and there were some fucking really good matches. Was the crowd similar the crowd to was, WWE shows and nah, other shows or was it like you could tell like like an, uh, an American indie wrestling show crowd? Okay. And they were all super into Bullet Club, like not as into other stuff. I mean, they they you know they cheered for Tanahashi and mm-hmm. Okada and Naito and all those guys, um, but they were way more interested in Bullet Club. They were more interested in the Young Bucks, more interested in Cody and Kenny, which was the main event. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was a little disappointed by that because it would be really cool to to go see a show in Japan where, like, everybody's, like, super into Tanahashi and shit and, like, Okada and all those guys. Well, they <clears throat> squashed Marty Skrull, Hangman Page, and Takahashi in the first round. Yeah. And, uh... Well, Page got, like... Didn't he get, like, the first, like, two pins in that match? Like, he got the first two eliminations, no? I thought. Uh... But they got eliminated. They, uh, they were eliminated first? Yeah. Really? Yeah. They scrolled in the gata. They went at it. Bullet Club established dominance. Anyway, we don't have to... Then a buckshot it. lariat from Paige. We don't have the time, time Mi- to It was miscommunication. About every But match. the miscommunication among Bullet Club is what led to their downfall yeah. in that match. And then that went into uh, introducing minutes. Hiroki Goto, Chucky e. T, and Beretta of the Affiliation Chaos. Yeah. And Ty Cobb whooped some serious ass. Uh-huh. Not Ty Cobb. <laughs> Ty Jeff Cobb. Cobb. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ty Cobb came back, pitched a no-hitter. At Seriously, it'd be like Cobb. two hours if we talk this in depth about well, every match. I'm just trying to, get to, I'm just trying to remember the highlights. <laughs> You're doing more than highlights. You're saying the name of every single person who's in the match. Well, these people that were cool. Well, so, like people can look that up. Like we don't need. I to like Suzuki Goon. I like. I thought he was cool. Suzuki Goon is great. Minoru Suzuki is. He was crazy. I like seeing all that shit. He had one like, of my favorite guys. He had like carved in his head and stuff, and seeing yeah. his like style, and he just looks like a prisoner that escaped a mental yeah, institution. Yeah, right. He does. And is like, I'm out of feces to throw around. I'm gonna <laughs> fuck people up. 
Like, that was really yeah. cool. That you didn't even strange. get to see him have, like, a real legit tantrum, because that shit is great. He, like, throws the railings around and shit and kicks them and fucking throws chairs. And then the ultimate beauty of this was that Ryusuke Taguchi, Togi Makabe, and Toru, Toru Yano. Yano. D-Rock was the match. espousing to me his deep love of Toru Yano. Oh, I love Toru Yano. And he, he looks... was my top ten. He was, he was number nine. With Kenny Omega on my top ten of last year, and he looks like a like a Best Japanese comedy match I've seen in I don't know how long. He looks like a Japanese Jack Black. <laughs> he doesn't look like, but he look he look he feels like Jack Black he has to me. That, yeah, um, that aesthetic to him. He's adorable. He's trying to cheat. He's beating people with uh, ring post pads. Yeah, he's just the tits. And he's always trying to hawk his DVDs. That's the other thing he always does. On the way to the ring, he like shows people his DVD. He's like, ah, oh, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> and he actually got to win one for the he Gipper. Got to win. Yeah, it picked up the W. And he's going to be at New Year's Dash. Yeah, haven't watched New Year's Dash up. yet. Probably should have done that before. <laughs> but that's another three hours, so like Steven's going to fall asleep already. So. The Killer Elite Squad, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm never been a big fan of KES. And then the show started proper. Coda, with, Ibushi. Yeah, it kicked off with a bang, man. Will Osprey. Ibushi and Osprey. See all the flippy shit happen up front. Yeah, man. And and see get fucking Coda Ibushi possibly like legit get a concussion. I wonder from that elbow. Like I don't know. People are wondering if it's a work or not. It's a it's a thing. Well, I was wondering from a technical standpoint, as you're building a ring, right? Would you want the most like? Because Will Osprey and Coda, I'm going somewhere with this. Coda okay. are very lightweight wrestlers in comparison to the other wrestlers coming down the card. Yeah. Would you want them to perform best on a fresh ring, right? Fresh it's because they got the first match, you know, after the yeah. first warm-up thing. Okay. Like, if there was heavier... If, like, they were that closer, right? Mm hmm Would the ring be, like, less stable for them? I wonder as the night went up. I don't think the the ring deteriorates in, like... In quality? In enough, in appreciable enough... Manner? Way that To it affect would make, match performance? That it would make a difference, yeah. Yeah. From the first to the last match, like I don't know. Especially the the New Japan ring is really stiff and flat, like it's barely padded. Maybe they're just so good at flying around. Um, <laughs> the WWE ring, maybe, and they like the other thing about WWE. Well, not now, but like in the old days, they used to have like a couple layers of canvas. Mm -hmm. um, especially if they knew that there was going to be a match that there was going to be blood in. So they would strip it off after and the match, have a next one. Okay. so that there wasn't blood all over. Because they they actually didn't always do that. I've totally seen like pay per views where there's just blood on the ring <coughs> for the rest of the pay per view. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, it was a very hardcore, uh, brutal match. Just Osprey and uh, well, not hardcore, but like yeah, it was no, hard but it hitting. was just like people's sure. necks and yeah. like. Bro, looked like everyone look that that should have been like both Coda and him should have left in a wheelchair in that match. Yeah, yeah. And them doing snot is it looked just like a, they were fucking a gift to their abilities of wailing on each other, jumping around. Good. Which isn't that different from a normal New Japan match, actually, but like a little bit. It was it was a little extreme. But Coda gets extreme sometimes, man. He's had some fucking violent. You should see the. The match he had in the G1 with Kenny Omega, oh man. They fucking destroyed each other. It was dope. The They had like that tree of woe spot in the corner. Just unloading on, that's pretty dope. On the, on the apron, right? Yeah. The, the tree of woe on the apron, yeah. And then... Titles changed. This and is the, the only non-title match in the card. This is no. The oh no, never open weight champion, sorry. The only non-title match is Jay White and Kazuchika Okada. Okay. So Osprey is now a legend among all. Yeah, he Gaijin. fucking he fucking nailed him with that elbow, man. Like, 
And I've seen him nail guys with that elbow before, and it looks pretty bad, but actually his... His kind yeah. of like back of his, you know, his like tricep will kind of like graze the guy mm -hmm. in such a way that like it makes his neck go fucking wild, mm -hmm. but like it doesn't actually hit his head that hard, which is still kind of gnarly. But like this one, it looked like he might have like hit him pretty flush. Did this match play a little similarly to when uh, Osprey fought uh, Ricochet a few years ago? I don't know. I haven't and it seen was like that a, match. A flip fest. I think, no, like, no, yeah. it's, it. it it didn't feel like that to me, this match. Like, that that was... There was, like, vitriol and story going on there. Ooh. As opposed to, like, the Ricochet Osprey thing was, like, you know, basically, like, gymnastics. Okay. Um, it was just cool-looking flippy shit. Back and forth. But, um... No, this match, I mean, that... that the, the Oh, I remember what Tree of Woe spot you're talking about now. Where he, like, was sitting in front of him... And like slapping. Yeah, and he was, was stuck, and he was like was trapped, cool, and he's trying to call him out. Yeah, that was a cool spot. That was a cool little like storytelling spot. And then Coda starts slapping him back, and he's like fucking kicks him in the face. Yeah. yeah, those Osprey kicks to the neck look like not not pleasant at all. Yeah. These aren't kisses. Uh -huh. <laughs> Next match was a three way for the IWGP Junior Tag Team the junior Championship. Tag the junior tag, I, like, I am, tend to be a little on the critical side of New Japan junior heavyweight class stuff, just because it's so, like, it's just fucking mile a minute flippy shit, work rate, like, constant, like, no selling and all kinds of, like, there was a match, there was a junior heavyweight match at the G1 special that I went to in San Francisco that I, like, wasn't really a huge fan of because it was so much they did this one spot where they just like took turns back and forth like fucking 15 times fucking German suplexing each other and just getting up in Germans and getting up in German and I was just like like the crowd ate it up and I was just like I don't I'm not invested in this at all. Mm -hmm. They're not like they're not hurting this each other. This doesn't matter. Just, yeah. Yeah, nothing matters cuz they're just getting up from it. So, but the two junior heavyweight matches on this on Wrestle Kingdom, I really actually enjoyed. They were different than the normal, that like mile a minute flippy shit stuff. It was a little more, especially the junior heavyweight title match, was a little bit more slow and like technical and you know striking and stuff like not that not as much of that like flippy shit, but all of it was like well placed when they did it. Yeah, so. and I think overall the way they they laid out all the matches, there was like a good uh, change up match to match on like styles and yeah, and like you know grouping and stuff. It which was true of Wrestle Kingdom last year too, I think. Which is why I wouldn't complain that much about the two being so similar because mm. there's a lot of different stuff that they do. That's the way that a show like this, like WrestleMania, should always be like. A little bit of everything, you know? Those are the best WrestleManias when they give you a little bit of everything. 17 had a little bit of everything. The gimmick battle royal, the, the ladder match, the all kinds of different... The, the the TLC match, the fucking, you know, Stone Cold main mm -hmm. event. Um, the one I went to in Cali was like that, too. It was a little bit of everything. You want a Neapolitan. You want a little bit exactly, of Exactly, yeah. yeah. That's, what, that's what a centerpiece show like this should be. And there's really only this in... WrestleMania and Wrestle Kingdom are the only two shows like that. But that's really what it should be. So I was rooting for Show and Yo. But yeah, of course, man. Show and Yo. Because I think that the. Funda Blog approved. Yeah. I saw them beat the Young. or play, fighting the Young Bucks last year. And I mm -hmm. thought that was like, whoa, these are pretty boys. <laughs> yeah, right. They're super pretty boys. They're no. so synchronized, too, is the yeah. thing I notice about them. Everything they do, all the all the stuff together that they do is so synchronized. I kind of wish that their intro was that they were, like, in, like, a mirror, and then they, like, came out of it together nah, and stuff, yeah. and they're like, oh, let's be friends. Oh, yeah. High five. <laughs> what if they did the fucking, as, as the, that's, this is a genius uh, Wrestle Kingdom 14 entrance for Sho and Yo, to have them both dressed up as Spider-Man and then oh, come out shit. and point at each other. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How great would that be? Oh, my God. 
Um, and then Takagi Instead Endo. of uh, the fucking fire extinguisher. <laughs> <laughs> Takagi and Bushi took the win. Um, I liked... Was, that was Shingo, right? Shingo Tak- Takagi? Shingo Takagi, the last of I the dragon. I liked a lot. I liked, I liked a lot of his moves. I liked his yeah. finisher. His I finisher his is called the last dragon. of the dragon. Nice. And that was pretty badass. Yeah. And he had a very, like... He uh, was the only one on his team that did anything, though. Yeah. <laughs> No, Bushi, Bushi was just hanging out. But he fucking owned it, man. He was great. I, I liked him a lot. And I like how his chest looks like really like big and like overdeveloped. Yeah, like big. And he, he just looked like, you know, huge extra like peck tits. mean. I don't know. That's pretty dope. Yeah. He's pretty badass. Yeah. I, I like him. I like, I like, him. I I like some of those like junior heavyweights that are a little more like gruff style wrestling. You know, more, more on the strong style and less on the flippy shit. Um, that's some good stuff. Desperado and Kanemaru ended a 300 plus day reign as champions without even it was like being a record. I think wasn't without e- without even being involved in the pinfall. That sucks. Whoa. Next up was Zack Saber Jr. versus Tomohiro Tomohiro Ishii. 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 I think, the, it's, I think it's three syllables. Ishii. 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 Not Ishii, but For the Ishii. British Heavyweight Championship. For the, yeah, for the Rev Pro British British Heavyweight Championship. That was a great match. Um, I'm not usually a huge fan of... Well, I'm not, <coughs> I'm not a huge fan of Ishii, Ishii um, when he has matches against other big, thick, strong style guys. Because it just turns into these, like, no-selling fests of just, like, trading moves and no-selling them. And other people are way into that kind of stuff. Um, I didn't have uh, his match in the G1 with uh, uh, Haruki Goto for that reason. And a lot of other people ranked it really high on their list. Uh, I just don't... It just doesn't do it for... the, the That amount of no-selling, like... I can get mm-hmm. used to some of the no-selling in New Japan, mm-hmm. but that much of it, I just... I, it, I, it does nothing for me. I like it under the filter of, like, honor or, like... You know, yeah, trying to show toughness. Thing. They want to... Sh- especially when they sell yeah. it, like, after. Showing toughness? Like, they tough up, and then they're like, fuck! <laughs> but I don't want to see a spot fest. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Um, I liked Zack Sabre Jr. I wasn't sure what to expect from him after hearing people talking about him for, for like a year or so plus. He's like just hearing a, whispers of like, whoa, Zack Sabre Jr. He's kind of a like modern twist on a throwback yeah. type of wrestler. I was expecting, he looks different than what I was imagining, like a hundred percent. He's like, super I was, lanky. I was expecting somebody more like prototypically wrestler, bigger build. He probably couldn't do a yeah. lot of the submissions that he does if he was any thicker than he was, because he's so flexible to, that he can do some of that stuff. But he came out as like a cool, uh, like, '80s ski lodge villain. Oh and yeah, yeah, his little jacket. He did some cool ass. Uh, you know, he was trying to take out the stone pimple, take out his arms, do some flippy shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Stone Pimple. Yeah, that's the thing Pretty about, crazy. That's the thing about Ishii is that I like him against smaller guys. It was it was kind of a strange matchup for them to... I think they kind of threw him to the... You know, trying to test him. Dude, Zack Sabre. Zack Sabre Jr. Yeah. Because it would have been easy to put him with 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 Coda or with, they put him with, with anybody else. What's, like, what's, like you would have known what you were going to get for sure. What I find really interesting about this is they... So they, they kind of put him with, like... The one guy you wouldn't think he would be, he would make. He's successful, yeah, yeah. That he would be able to make him submit. So like Ishi, like when I saw he was against Ishi, I was like, well, if he wins this match, it's got to be like a pin because he's they're not gonna have Ishi tap out, and they had they did, which is so interesting that 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 seems to indicate to me that they're like pushing him pretty hard. Yeah, like this was uh, oh my god, he made the one guy tap out. That no one ever. It's like if you if somebody made John Cena tap out, mm-hmm. it would be like holy shit. This guy is like this, he's broken they're, they're, the will. Yeah, they're really establishing this guy as like a submission specialist that can beat literally anybody in the whole promotion mm-hmm. by submission, and that's interesting. That's an interesting character. And he was looking and for it. And he can it. lose to anybody because he's so small. He's so 
one fo- yeah, he's, he's so he's, singularly focused. No, and he's so arrogant. Like, and he's so arrogant. Like, and so easy to agitate. Like, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a wrestler up until that point be so, like, disrespectful and, like, yeah. s- extra slappy dickish in yeah. a match. Like, yeah. It he was does that impressive. in every, every single one of his matches. I love that about him. Like, There's a point, at some point in the match, where he just gets super cocky. He starts, like, soft kicking the guy in the head and taunting him. And, like, it's so great. You have this character where he has such a, a such a high, like, level strength and and also so many vulnerabilities yeah. that make him so vulnerable to being beaten by anyone and he can beat anyone. That's, like, a, that's a cool yeah. character. You never know what the result of his matches are going to be. He's the best in spite of himself. There's, there's nobody <laughs> like that in WWE up, yeah. that could beat anyone or could lose to anyone. Mm-hmm. There's nobody like that. There's nobody that could, like, beat John Cena and lose to R-Truth, you know? Like, <laughs> there's nobody like that. R-Truth's like, damn, I wanted to beat R-Truth. <laughs> uh, After that barn burner where Sabre yeah, became the British heavyweight champion of the New Japan world, it was the three-way IWGP tag team championship match. Yeah, Once again, the tag team was a three-way. But which was great. that's just because they're so the field is so stacked, you know? Like, I mean, this is it's interesting because um, Matt Matt and Nick, ever since they moved up to the heavyweight class, have basically been feuding with Evil and Sonata the entire time. Mm-hmm. Like, the entire year, they've been feuding with Evil and Sonata. They fought at Dominion. They fought at the G1 special that I went to. They fought again here. And they're so good together. And both those teams understand tag team wrestling so well. Mm-hmm. Those matches were so good. This one was great, too. And you add in the the G.O.D. And there's, like, a, all kinds of story things going on mm-hmm. there. And it's, like, it was it was really good. I was... Very impressed once again by the Young Bucks. I once again begrudgingly am, like, very impressed by the Young (laughs) Bucks. Because they're so hyped up, but, like, there's a reason why. They're so good at everything. They're such good characters. They're great tag team wrestlers. They're great at flippy shit. They're athletic. They're good at selling. They just, they do it all. And I get why people say that they're the best tag team in the world. Um, it was cool. It was around this match where I realized that, like, everyone is gonna come out in a mask because it's Yeah, everybody's got their Wrestle Kingdom Cause Gorillas of Destiny had, like, stupid, uh... Yeah, Steven hated the G.O.D. Until they lit up the eyes at the end. Yeah, they right. waited to light up the eyes. <laughs> it's cause they boffed the entrance. You're supposed yeah. to light up the eyes on the way in. Yeah, right. Not right before you take off the helmet. Yeah. So, that's why they looked like cold and lifeless dead robots. Right. Okay. But there's a lot of masks. Evil had really cool entrance. Evil's had the best like entrance a, gear. Like a dark death wizard. The sickle and the fucking... Yeah, the, the wizard shit with the, the fucking projection thing. It was super cool. So, I'm down with Evil. I'm down with Sonata. Evil and Sonata are great. I like them a lot. Um, happy they might they, be my favorite tag team. Happy they got the W. Sonata's um, really underrated, too. He had a match... <coughs> with Okada when Evil was injured for the heavyweight title and I like I thought I f- had no inkling like I was like there's no way Sonata has any chance in this match mm-hmm. so he's just a fuck he's a tag team guy and he's like he you know he's just wrestling on but that match was really good and I actually kind of bought into Sonata possibly being able to win that match I didn't think he would of course because it was Okada and yeah. like they're not going to take the title but I, I bought that he could. Like, it looked like he was a legitimate contender in the match. Mm-hmm. And I was impressed by that. Grills of Destiny were cool. Um, it would be kind of interesting to see them in the WWE, in the land of, of a thousand Samoans. I feel, like they could, <laughs> I feel like they could do well in WWE, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just have them feud with, like, the Usos or something like that. Yeah. Huh? No, but they, 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 could be, they could be good in WWE, I think. Like they definitely have the size. Like yeah, you know. they have the size. They have the look. They have they they they're great wrestlers. 
Um, I think they could they could do well in WWE. Uh, da, 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 da. Then next up was Juice Robinson versus Juice Cody. Cody. Don't call him Rhodes. IWGP US Championship. The American match. Nightmare, whose shirt I am currently wearing. Whoa. Yeah. Got all dressed up for you, podcast fiends. Um, so that you could not see me. So, Pulp Friction is Juice's move? Yeah, it's Juice's finisher. Okay. It's the it's the Christian's unprettier, basically. Okay, no, because Cody tried to use it a couple times and on him as like disrespect. Yeah. So I was I was a little confused as to who's who's getting the friction. Yeah, that also it it, it uh, prompted me to show Stephen the Homicide's cop killer, which Whoa. which blew his mind because obviously like no one should ever do. That. <laughs> So, I'm go- pretty sure no one ever allows that to happen. Oh, Google that, kids, then never do it at home. Google yeah, the- no, fuck. Never, ever do that at home. Um, I had not seen Juice Robinson for what feels like a very long time, because I still remember him as, as C.J. Parker down in mm-hmm. NXT, trying to uh, Al Gore his way through the <laughs> WWE Universe. <laughs> yeah. To no, to no avail. Oh, I miss the environmentalist C.J. Parker, mm-hmm. but he's he's in a better place now. Um, Both literally and figuratively. Yeah, it was also maddening to me. His whole gimmick of just like he's just flamboyant. He's just <laughs> yeah. He's like I am every annoying thing. In yeah, the world. right. He's just like my pants are both furry and not furry. Yeah, I'm velvety and not velvety. He's flamboyant. It's just as many different things. Give me mo- your most annoying articles of clothing, please. <laughs> I'll have them all. Spencer's <laughs> here. Take this card. <laughs> Spencer's yeah. <laughs> he totally could have bought all that shit at Spencer's. That's great. Uh, so I super dug it. Um, yeah, I thought that was good. a really strong match. Mm-hmm. I don't and remember that much about it, but the saddest part is WD could have had that match. You know. I know, right? Like three, four years ago. Yeah. They're sitting on it. Yeah. That's crazy. He's gotten a lot bigger though, just Robinson since. Well, they've both gotten bigger. NXT. Oh, like bigger, literally. Like yeah, he's a lot thick. He's he's put on a lot of put on a bit of muscle. But yeah, they've both gotten you know bigger, bigger in Japan than they they ever and it, and for Cody in 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 the states too, with Ron, Ring of mm-hmm. Honor and stuff and All In and now with AEW. He's. He made the right call. Yeah. Quitting was the right call. Effect. It's a shame because if he could have been what he is now in WWE, he could have probably been a top heel. But he still could be. Yeah, he still could be. But he's, they'll bring him back. He's starting AEW now. He's not gonna have time for that shit. But they'll bring him back one day. They'll bring him back one day, probably. I'm sure. The nostalgia thing. Uh, so Juice took the crown from King Cody and ended his reign. Yes, that's true. And it's, Juice um, was, uh, he won the U.S. title originally at the G1 special that I went to. He had a, a really good match against Jay White, mm-hmm. which for me was the match of the night. Everybody else thought the match of the night was a junior heavyweight, which I hated. <laughs> um, but Juice and Jay had a great match for the U.S. title. Very vicious, good good story. Um, so I guess he dropped it to Cody a couple months later or something like that. So this is his second now, his second uh, U.S. title. Which I think he's... He would be the... So Juice is now the third and fifth U.S. champion. So that belt is, like, brand new. Kenny Omega was the first U.S. champion. When he when he was fighting Jericho for so have only Gaijin at held that Wrestle belt? Kingdom last year. So only Gaijin have held that belt. Only Gaijin. White people, not not <laughs> not Japanese people. Uh yeah, yeah. Only only foreigners so far. Pretty much only only North Americans, I guess, have held it. Yeah. This is no, because no, because Jay White is uh, New Zealand Kiwi. There you go. Then after that was uh, Kushida versus 
Taiji Ishimori. I like this match a lot. AKA this is, this is the other Bone Soldier. Bone Soldier. Yeah, they had a big thing like who is Bone Soldier leading up to, and that one was it was him. And then the most amazing part was the Back to the Future entrance. Oh, that was so great! I forgot about that. The for where they had a Ishimori. they had a little kid was in it Ishimori or kind of more that did that and uh, Ishim it was, Ishimori. It was yeah. Ishimori had like a little um, a little kid with a mask of his face, and then Doc Brown comes out and has to transform <laughs> him into an adult via time travel magic. I yeah. don't know. That he pulled. Uh, what was amazing too was how ridiculously long his antenna was. <laughs> yeah, like he, he, he pulled the pull it out antenna out of his remote control, and it's like it's like six feet tall. He <laughs> like, he like, oh pull it God. out all the way. It was great. Oh gosh. And that was a really cool entrance, and he was apparently a part of a tag team uh, called the Time Splitters at some point that I looked right. up, which uh, is cool. It's cool to have time travel themed uh, entrances. <laughs> More was, Back to the Future entrances. That was, are you sure was Ishimori? Is he Kushida? Wait. Kushida. Kushida. Okay. No, Kushida. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kushida. Ishimori's Bone Soldiers was in. Kushida. I think you said Kanamura before, and I was like, wait, it's not no. Kanamura. I was saying Ishimori. It was Kushida. It was totally Kushida. Which is Bone Soldier's real name. That Kushida. match was only 11 minutes, too. Whoa. I, I, that's, I feel like it was longer. The and Juice Cody match was only 9 minutes. He kind of, he not squashed him, but like, he won very decisively. Well, and yeah, Cody, yeah. I just read somewhere that Cody, I think, is having like... He's having surgery, I think his knee or something. So that might be why he lost so decisively. <coughs> but yeah, the undercard of this, like, there was only... The whole card, like the main card, other than the pre-show, because that match, of course, is long because it's a gauntlet. But other than the pre-show, there was only... Four matches that were longer than like twelve minutes. Well, the all the rest are like, and there was like a fourteen minute, and then the the Osprey match was eighteen, and then the main events, of course, were like, even the Jericho was only twenty two minutes. Remember, I was saying mm -hmm. it didn't seem like it was that long. It was only twenty two minutes, which is short for New Japan, but the main event was forty, yeah. thirty nine, but yeah. Uh, so Bone Soldier whooped ass. Bone uh, Soldier was awesome. I like Bone Soldier. Then was Okada. It was my first time seeing him, so. Okada versus Jay White. Yeah, it was. That was a good match. I had a really cool, um, pre fight video that we understood half of. Yeah, That's right. Cool. It's always good when, like, one, at least one of the the wrestlers is a white yeah. dude so you can understand. And Okada's what's going on. facials are so great. Yeah. His smile, that smile his looks, like, yeah. all everything is just fantastic. He just feels so mm. like you know wacky and just weird. Um, a dig Okada. Uh, yeah, Okada. Yeah, and that's the uh, I love the story of it too, where um, Okada's been kind of going through this like identity crisis. He's been fucking. You know, he changed... After he lost the title to Kenny, he, like, changed his hair. Mm -hmm. He start, He got, got a, like, a new theme song. Or, like, an updated version of his theme song. He, like, started tying balloons to his fucking trunks and shit. Mm -hmm. um, when I saw him at G1, he fucking... On a, on a, on a crossbody, he yelled, Scooby-Dooby-Doo! Ah! So he's just, like, doing all this weird shit. He's, like, having this, like, weird identity crisis. <laughs> And for this match, he showed up with the old... He did the old Rainmaker entrance. He had the old, like, jacket that he always wears, the Rainmaker jacket. He went back to the trunks. He, he had his, his hair back to blonde. So he was trying to, like, go back to, like, go back and find himself. But it was all for naught because he still yeah. lost. Well, he got in... He lost Gato, too. Gato turned on him and joined Jay White, and mm. they both joined Bullet Club. He had a pretty vicious tombstone on Jay White. 
And all throughout the night, there was some pretty There's gnarly of, tombstones. There was a lot, and of I gnarly, haven't seen a lot of gnarly spots in general. A lot of tombstone pile drivers in a while, because WWE yeah. doesn't put those out. Like, they, no, don't, they, they don't, don't do those no more. Nobody does them except for... Kane, Kane or Undertaker. Or yeah, yeah. So I haven't seen pile drivers. So to see, like, all these different sized dudes doing pile drivers mm-hmm. was very nerve-wracking, and some went a lot better than others. Some, yeah. Some, this, they, they, get, they got pretty close to... Fucking breaking some necks on some of those, yeah. um, but they do they do them all right. But I thought it was a really solid match, and I liked Jay White. I didn't want to like Jay White, but by the end of the match, I I dug him. He's a great. He's he's such a. I I think he's a great heel. He's just so supremely dislikable as a wrestling character and he's like always cheating he's fucking disrespectful he mm-hmm. fucking just like has no honor in any of his matches fucking he got Gato on his side now and Gato's trying to cheat for him and but he didn't even need Gato's interference to actually win the match which was really interesting yeah. to me that Okada is somebody that like he, he's one of the most unbeatable guys in New Japan. And Jay White took him out with fucking, like, one one Blade Runner, right? Like, that Blade Runner. Well, really well he, was trying that to hit, Blade Runner. he was trying to hit a couple Blade Runners that didn't catch. And then the one he finally got was, mm-hmm. was enough. He got him. And then the, the announcer said something really interesting after he won that match. And it, it, they were kind of like, Kevin Kelly was kind of like, I can't believe I'm even saying this, but... Kazushka Okada can't beat Jay White because mm-hmm. he lost to him in the G1 too. He cheated, but he lost to him in G1, so it's, it's like, oh shit, this is like a thing now. So there's, that's that's the weirdest thing to say. Like that to say Okada can't be, quote unquote can't beat anyone is insane to say, mm-hmm. but to say he can't beat fucking twenty six year old annoying smarmy ass Jay White is mm-hmm. like crazy and now it kind of seems like Jay White at least from my perspective I could see him kind of trying to maneuver into leader of the Bullet Club now especially with Gato by his side he has that like that leverage wisdom gravitas aspect that he might be able to or Gato might be able to convince some of the other guys but the 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 Tongans are probably gonna have something to say about that so we'll see what happens there there's a lot of good stories that are actually going on now it's interesting. I'd I'd love to be able so, to understand more of. So this <laughs> this served as a good uh, jumping off. There's point a lot for of the great New jumping Japan off point here, stuff right? for Cody. Hats. Cody seems to be going through a rough patch. Okada's going through a rough patch. I mean, has been for a while. So there's a lot of a lot of storytelling <coughs> possibilities going forward from a lot of what happened. Next up was the Intercontinental Championship No DQ match. Naito versus Jericho. And this was predictably awesome. Yep, predictably awesome. I wouldn't say quite as good as their match at Dominion, which was fucking excellent. Especially for the surprise of Jericho winning the Intercontinental title. Like, I don't think anybody expected him to like win the title. Um, but there's a lot of cool little moments for Jericho yeah, getting to do like a, a springboard drop kick. Some of those, like the pile driver on the on the uh, the ramp. Yeah, that was early and that, that like, was vicious and horrifying. And the DDT on the table that looked pretty gnarly too. Yeah, but it looked a little bit less dangerous at least. But and like, there's some gnarly stuff. Yeah, we Derek was marveling at uh, Jericho's um, in ring psychology to just take a stack of chairs put it <laughs> in the ring. In no, it's just of like, you four. know, they always make such a big show out of one, two, in one three. at a time. And Jericho's like, no, save some time. To I stacks. want a lot of chairs. A bunch of chairs, chairs here. You get it. There's a bunch of chairs yeah. in here. I don't need to show them all to you. And all of those chairs felt like grenades as the as the match went on because then, yeah, they were doing cause then to, get the, to, to get the pin and stuff, they had to clear them out of the way to be able to just give it a count. They were, like, throwing them out yeah. at one point, right? Like, yeah, yeah. I think they, Nido, like, One, one of them nailed definitely one of the, the young lions and shit oh, yeah. on the side. Oh, yeah. that's right. In the, yeah. yeah, but that's at the end. But the young lions. It was a pretty gnarly, pretty intense match. I think 
Jericho with his spike jacket entrance and uh, yeah, and the the makeup, the creepy. I don't know. I don't, I don't want to call it sting makeup, but you know, right. Jericho oh, makeup. Yeah, the, the crow. It's his own design. It's crow leg. But, but it's just uh, so greasy, so nasty to see yeah. Jericho so thick. Yeah, totally. And to see his thighs just like massive as they like fucking wail into somebody yeah, totally. is just. He's, he's getting, premium he's getting Jericho. thicker for sure. I like it. I like his. I love his character right now in New Japan. This just like mean streak that he's got. He's like he's he seems so like legitimately dangerous. It's a great character, and I loved the ending of this match too. With uh, there was a great callback to uh, to last year's Wrestle Kingdom um, when uh, Naito hit the Destino. And Jericho kicked out because it was just like it's it's like what oh it's happening again you know like there's there was that moment at last year's Wrestle Kingdom where he hit Destino on Okada and everybody thought that was it they they thought that he was gonna finally he finally beat Okada that's a one of those yeah, that he, yeah. that's a, that's a monkey on his back he's like never been able to beat Okada in like a big match situation. And it was like, oh shit, it's happening again. You see on his face this like, oh shit, it's happening again. Like, a, you, and like the fact that he is able to, he, his, his character progresses in that way where he reacts differently this time. Not like noticeably, but yeah. he wins the match this time. <coughs> um, hits a second Destino and wins the match. And then even more great character development is after the match... When Red Shoes is raising his hand, he fucking gouges his eyes out. Nah. Just like to, I love that idea of like he's so pissed at Red Shoes for slow counting, both this time and last time. Yeah, that he just like gouges his eyes and then leaves the ring and makes Red Shoes' son, the young lion, go and bring him his title, and then like fake punch, fakes like he's gonna punch him, and, and spits in his face, title. and spits in his face. That's right. Yeah. It's fucking badass. No, it was great. It's a fucked up badass. Night was great, man. Crazy I wish I could fun. understand more of what he was saying, but like, I, even without, like, you can still, uh, still a lot of what he does comes through as a as a character. Uh, and last but not least, Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Kenny Omega for the IWGP Heavyweight Championship. I definitely didn't expect Omega to lose this match. But I got it spoiled for me, which was kind of a bummer. Because it would have been so unexpected to me. I, I, w I would have thought for sure he was going to retain. But now everyone's talking about, is Kenny Omega going to WWE? So <coughs> I don't think it's going to happen, but who knows? I don't see it happening Vince either. has a money truck, though. <laughs> it's true, yeah. They're, the The... The word going around is that WWE has offered him a very good deal. A very good, like, AJ Styles type of deal. AJ Styles money. They're, they're, they want him. They want him, like, he's going to be... If he comes to WWE, he's not going to NXT. He's going to yeah, be... He's going to be down straight to the top. Immediately, yeah. And if they get these people... He's going to debut in the Royal Rumble probably yeah. if, if, they, if, if he signs. If they get... The New Japan talent that people are speculating they're trying to acquire. Mm -hmm. All these people are going to SmackDown, right? Like, you gotta imagine this is um, to infuse SmackDown with a... You know, I don't know that WWE necessarily thinks that guys like Omega and Okada and Naito and guys like that have the kind of mass appeal in this country mm -hmm. that they would want them on Fox. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. They might... That's a good question. I'm not sure. Um, it would be cool if they did. It would be cool if they thought that highly of them. I just think that would be the enticing thing for Kenny Omega. Because the thing that... Like, the, being the, on Raw and on USA is, is cool, but... Getting to be on national television mm -hmm. weekly sounds the, like a more enticing deal, yeah. you know? The people that they're going to have on SmackDown are going to be, you know, the Brock Lesnar's, the... 
Ronda Rousey, yeah, yeah. John Cena, Roman Reigns, the the like big, you know, the people that are out doing public yeah, yeah, yeah. appearances, the big brand people yeah. that are that have the crossover appeal kind of stuff. Uh, so Omega versus um, Tanahashi. Tanahashi, lots of slapping. Living legend. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a kind of a staple in a lot of big New Japan matches. They kind of do that to like to like both psych each other up and also to like fire each other. Up. Just yeah, well, uh, just and also like gets kind of disrespectful, you know. Mm-hmm. Like it's not something that's necessarily meant to like hurt the guy that much. Mm-hmm. It kind of is. Especially when they do that much of it, but it's more of a just like bring it on and like a you know who's gonna blink first kind of thing. And uh, there was a cool storyline going on where Kenny's trying to just basically end Tanahashi's whole career and existence. They didn't really articulate that, but I think Steven they did a little. Did. I think they did a little bit. Steven, well, they, in the in the video package, there was a lot of Kemi, Omega like talking about like this. This is gonna be his last match. Mm-hmm. He shouldn't even be, like, you know, he's washed up, the kind of stuff, mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. Um, and but the announcers didn't play it up that much. But it seemed like, and Steven pointed this out, that, like, because he was working the back so much, it's like, he, he like, that's the, the best way to, like, end somebody's career, probably, mm-hmm. is, like, a real, like, a really bad back injury. Um, and, uh... Because he doesn't have, like, a history of that. Like, he had a knee injury that was mm-hmm. widely talked about earlier in 2018. But a, the back, I don't think, is something, and the announcers didn't say mm-hmm. anything about it either, that he had had a history of that. So I feel like that must have been what it was, but the announcers never indicated that. Kenny had a sick-ass spot where he did, like, a moonsault right in between announcers yeah off the rail table area just barely you know didn't eat a fucking table with his face yeah he does um, that quite a bit and Kenny's entrance with his one winged angel like final fantasy outfit yeah that was cool super dope armor with little omega symbols etched into with it and stuff gun, laser gun cannon on his thing finger. On finger and then he had the dope uh, video game graphic of him entering <coughs> like Oh yeah, that was the eight bit uh, everything opener. Everything about his aesthetic of entrance is just yeah so wonderful. That was good. So fun. Uh, it was cool seeing Tanahashi's uh, air guitar powers. Yeah, and then the um, it was cool too the the whole story they've been doing with Tanahashi like he <coughs> he had his leg injured, kayfabe injured, um by Minoru Suzuki, like, early, early on in 2018, and there was a, a, a recurring theme in his matches throughout the year, and along with, like, he's he's been doing this for a long time, he's getting on in years, this kind of, like, does he have one more, like, you know, run at the top in him, and he went through the whole G1, and he beat, he beat fucking Ibushi, who's, like, He's not that young. He's been doing this a while, but he's he's very young looking. Mm-hmm. He 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 wrestles very young. He seems like a very young guy, mm-hmm. um, even if he's not that young. He's still pretty young, but he ran through everybody. He this was like his redemption arc kind of thing, you know. And he Made he challenged he challenged Okada to to and he put the <coughs> put the contract on the line for the G one. He was the one that he said, "If I can't beat Okada, I shouldn't go to go to the Tokyo Dome." Well, so it was this whole big like redemption arc of like, can he climb back to the top after his injury and being as old as he is? And he completed the fucking redemption. He's he's mm-hmm. the new champ now. He's the champ of the world, and he only had one air guitar in him. Yeah, he only yeah. He was spent. His mana was spent. Yeah, it took too much out of him. It was very impressive. Uh, I like his style. He feels very. Uh, I mean, it kind of felt like uh, like like seeing Neville perform and stuff, like just the way like he uses his body in a very like bullet like, mm. aggressive sort of missile way. Mm-hmm. So he's pretty dope. And he did. I mean, he's the 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 great story is like, and you could see Kenny Omega felt kind of like, <clears throat> and it came through in the video package before. Like he 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 didn't think he should be here. He's just clinging to his spot. He should retire. Um, 
And he, in the match, too, you could tell he was kind of cocky. He didn't really think Tanahashi could beat him. And then, there's the but the thing about Tanahashi is he's scrappy as hell, and he has all those, like, moves that, that go after the leg. Mm-hmm. And he had the, I mean, the dragon screw is, like, his, his big, uh, one of his Game big changer. moves. Game yeah. changer, and, he and it was ultimately on, Kenny's knee that kept that, on going that after that ended leg. Him. Yeah. yeah, and it was smart too because so much yeah. of Kenny's offense is fucking knees to the yeah. face. Oh, and there was that and vicious. He fucking hurt it every time he did yeah. it. It hurt him more. And there was that vicious moment where like Kenny has like one foot up on like the second like turnbuckle, and then uh, he got underneath him and yeah. just pulled down. He, pulled down. he did the his leg and screw sp- through oh, the man. ropes. That's crazy. It looked le- it looked like it could have legit injured yeah. Kenny Omega's leg. Vince probably wasn't too happy about that. What are you doing? Don't hurt him. It was a strong show. Very enjoyable. It was great. It was good. It was a very good show. They didn't do the piece at the end they sometimes do where they'll bring the new challenger out. I guess they wanted Tanahashi to kind of have his moment. This is probably his last one. So, <clears throat> wanted to give him his moment and then let him yeah. enjoy it. It would have been amazing. I really want to watch New Year's Dash mm-hmm. and see who's next. It would have been amazing if Doc Brown would have come out at the end and been like, Tanahashi! We need you to go back to the future! We need you to go back to the beginning! <laughs> Wrestle Kingdom 1! <laughs> <laughs> you gotta fight yourself! <laughs> oh, that would be pretty good. Yeah. I mean, Kota Ibushi fought uh, a, uh, a blow-up doll, so... Well, must have yeah. been some serious rivalry there. Yeah. And uh, Saturn had that match against the Mop, didn't he? This is the Mop. Somebody saying something about that. But yeah, great show. Overall, Spenger. No real weak points. Spenger 1000 yen wisely. And, uh. On New Japan World. And a lot of variety. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like. Wrestle Kingdom last year is the reason I bought the, the subscription in the first place to see Omega and Jericho. <laughs> and it's opened a whole new world, you know. It's, it's been pretty cool. I like, I'm getting pretty into this this new Japan thing. So it might be as good, all, almost as good as all the kids say. The pure wrestling aspect of it is second to none. There's other parts of it that I wish they were more of, and they're they're kind of bringing a little bit more of that in. I feel like I think they're they might be trying to appeal to. American audiences a little more by having a little bit more story stuff going on. Well, I don't know because I've mm-hmm. I've only been a fan for a year, mm-hmm. so. Well, they gotta see there's money, you know. There's money yeah. over here. Yeah, and they've always had some mm-hmm. storytelling aspect of it yeah. more than people realize, probably. Um, but it's yeah, good. it's good stuff. Is there any one performer or talent who you wish? would come into the New Japan roster? Would come to New Japan? Oh, yeah. man. What performer or talent do you think? The first one that pops into my mind... <coughs> not because it's my top choice, but just because it's the first one I thought of is Daniel Bryan, but he should not go to New Japan. Yeah, he'd die. He would fucking die! I know that's not safe for Daniel yeah. Bryan. They'll no, break his neck. Yeah. They'll fucking give him concussion. No, but seeing Kenny Omega neck. versus Daniel Bryan, I imagine, would be, oh, yeah, for would sure. would be an extremely entertaining match. It would be, except that so much of it, Omega is mm-hmm. beast to the face, and it's just like, yeah, I would, I would be too scared for Daniel Bryan's health. Um, let me think about it a little more. There's a lot of guys that are that would be great candidates for that for different reasons. Like, I would kind of love to see John Cena well, come to New Japan and fucking... I was like, gonna... he could take all the stuff. Yeah. He, he He's thick, you know? He can take a lot of stuff. He had great matches with Cesaro for that reason. Uh, that, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say punishment. Cesaro. Cesaro would be great. Cesaro would he be, would be a great guy. You know, Sheamus would well, be great. He's, he's one of the guys in W... That's something that he's really underrated for, I think is he is one of the few guys in WWE that's really willing to take, like, hard hits. 
He's all he did. He he always did it against Roman. <coughs> he always did it in the matches against Cesaro. He took some heavy stuff, and he could take some some heavy shit from the New Japan New Japan guys. Um, but there's a lot of guys I would love to see some dream matches, um, dream feuds for sure. You know, John Cena's been like learning Chinese for like five six years now, right? Yes, but that's China. Well, I know. I know, I know. I'm just saying. He's been learning Chinese for like six years now. Yeah. He's been like studying like two hours, two to four hours a week. Oh, wow. Because he's dedicated. Because his he, he was, I was hearing an interview with him and he was saying that like, he realized like we haven't, that WD has not, like the only, the only means left to grow WWE is in China. <laughs> and so six years ago he was like, I'm going to start seeing because if I could be responsible for helping open up. Huh. That market, I will have shown Vince that I do have. I don't I'm value. Not, I'm not familiar with what kind of like wrestling stuff they have going on in China. Mm. I know Japan has a lot, like mm. not just New Japan, I, just all Japan. Also, I, and I'm pretty famous. I'm curious one. to learn why that is, because it seems like Japan is very much more, you know. I can't remember. It, it's, is it, I wonder if China's resistant to wrestling because they consider it something that's more. Japanese culture, yeah, like it's know. too Western or something. I don't know, but I don't know mm. what what there is in China. I'm trying to look up. <clears throat> There's one called Noah, and I can't remember if it's Japanese or Chinese. Um, no, it's Japanese. Yeah. So yeah, I I don't know. I I don't. I can't think of any major uh, Chinese wrestling promotions that I know of. Mm. That doesn't mean there aren't any, obviously, but. I can't think of any that I'm familiar with from the outside. Is it that yeah. wrestling has too much free speech for China? <laughs> it was like, no, we don't want to give them mic time. It seems like it's mainly an America, an, a North America, uh, Europe, and uh, Japan thing. Well, uh, it's just virtue of... You know, turn the century with some people talking to each other. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's you know, they just we just need wrestling's uh, version of the the dream team to go and spread the gospel oh of God. of wrestling to the Dude. world. Wow, that would be crazy. You <clears throat> pick ten wrestlers. That's what you ask like almost any of the like international stars in the NBA now. The reason they picked up a basketball in the first place is. <coughs> seeing the dream team come to their country, whoa! And seeing these guys, who are like, fucking ten times better than every single team they put in front of them on mm-hmm. that on that ninety two run, even the like title game that was like they won by like sixty points and shit. Um. But yeah, that inspires. So we need the we need the wrestling okay. version of that. Okay, five man wrestling dream team faction. Dream team. I mean. Action. I go. It would be difficult. So, like, if we're talking about, like, a real life thing that could happen. No, right now. That we're talking about right now. Right now. The pre- best, present day. The best wrestlers right now to show the world how good wrestling can You're be. You're going to pick five. I'm going to pick five. I would say Johnny Gargano. Okay, that's your first pick. My first pick is Kenny Omega. No overlap. Yeah, I'm not... Yeah. Um, Johnny Gargano, AJ Styles. Well, AJ Styles, I'll take... Uh, I'll take... What's this guy's name? Uh, Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins. Should I take Seth Rollins? Mm. That's tough. Um, Sami Zayn. Whoa. Sami Zayn is the, the, the total package Whoa. to me. Although, a similar mold as Johnny Gargano. Mm-hmm. So maybe not best for like a dream team, but if we're talking like top five. No, no, it's a dream team. It's going to be top five. Top Just five. Deal with dream it. No, team. dream team. Yeah. It's, the dream is different. The dream. <laughs> different dreams. Yeah. Uh, I guess Roman still has leukemia. Uh, you're gonna pick Roman Reigns too for your dream team. Sh- 
He's, he's a face. He's really popular. He's on. Have you seen how many buses he's on, Derek? His face is on more buses than any superstar right now. Oh my god, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll go Braun Strowman. You need that big freak. Braun you need a Strowman. super freak. You need a super freak. Is a Wrestling's good about super freaks. Strowman is a good pick. I've only picked WWE guys so far. I don't want to pick another one and then only have one. <laughs> one one this one New fun. Japan. But Braun Strowman is a good one. And he's, I mean, he's like the best big guy there's been in a while. Fuck, I might have to take Braun Strowman. No, you can't. I already picked him. You, you can't have him. Oh, you can't have any You overlap? can't overlap. Oh, well then. Yeah, you're done. That makes that easier. Yeah. Um. I want to have a big guy now, though, because that's a good point. You should have one. But, like, there's no one that's near as good as, as Strowman. Um. Man. My next pick? Mascara Sagrada Jr. <laughs> you need a little guy. <laughs> you need a little guy. A little guy, yeah. Um, I got sizes. Don't worry about it. Uh, I guess I would say... Fuck, it's hard to do just a top five because then you don't have tag teams. This is just like... To show the world. Right, but you gotta show the world tag team wrestling. Tag team wrestling's important. Which I would probably take the Young Bucks. Okay, so then you can have, that's, the, that's you, you, you can have the Young Bucks as one unit of human. As one unit? Okay, there you go. But then you need another tag team for them to wrestle. My so last pick will be a tag team. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Young um, Bucks, who else? One more. And then your fifth pick. Young Bucks are honorable mention. <laughs> I'm gonna pick um <coughs> man um I think I think Okada Kazuchika Okada well I think yeah I think my last two picks are Okada and Naito Okada Naito Naito is as I, I would love to pick Suzuki, but he's getting on in years, so he's not necessarily. Or like, man, I don't know, maybe Ibushi? He's such a great pure baby face, but also is like so vicious. But like Naito as a character is better mm. than Ibushi. It's hard. It's a hard one. Maybe maybe no Okada. And then Ibushi and uh Naito. and Naito. My last pick's gonna go to Jericho because he's the king of the mic, king of storylines. Jericho, lines. yeah, it's, I, everything he touches, he he's, makes work. He's, yeah, he's he's mm -hmm. the one. He he's definitely cementing himself and, as one of the greatest all time right now. And he's definitely you know he's got to feel very responsible for this new Japan surge over this last oh, year yeah. of growing sure. their brand and and you know taking them to the next level. For sure. Um. Because he's definitely introduced the brand to a lot of I people. I hope he. I hope he continues to do that, mm -hmm. and I hope he can. I hope somebody else. I hope they. I hope they'll. They. They can find somebody else who's willing to do that too. Some big, big American star, who can do that, with him. Who can like help with that. And and any uh, final uh, final thoughts? Last words. Oh. One last air guitar for the people. Oh my god, he's sweating. <laughs> Took everything out of him. Go, Ace! Um, ba -ba -da -ba -da. I am your host, S. Steven. And that is D Rock. D Rock, World Heavyweight Champion of the International Wrestling Grand Prix. Whoa. Grand Prix. <laughs> and remember, kids, if you have to take a Grand P. Just press pause on your NGPW world because they do have a pause button. Yes, they do. Although they don't have subtitles sometimes. No. Wundercast? Give yeah. it up for Wundercast, man. What an adorable name. This is
is Danielle. This is Steven. And we're here to tell you about the Voondacast, official podcast of Voondablog.com, the home of whatever. We talk comics, movies, pop culture, dogs, Miami drivers, spies, everything and anything awesome that we love we talk about on this podcast every Monday at 4 Eastern Time, only here on the Radioactive Underground. Radiate! Radiate. I'd also like to plug... Um, friends of the podcast, Lisa Hammer and Levi Wilson. Their movie, The Sisters Plots, is on Amazon Prime right now, and it is a hilarious musical. It's a hoot! About three sisters living in the lap of luxury, trying to have suitors that are coming to woo them away. The neighbor's children are rushing to go check out <coughs> The Sisters Plots. <coughs> I've seen it, Duke! We're gonna watch it in a little bit, relax! But we just got one more at. So I want you guys to go... On Patreon, support Lavender Rangers Patreon. He was on our Power Rangers episode. I want you guys to support Flush Studios Patreon. They're making an awesome horror movie called Grey Woods Plot that we're getting a producer credit on for our support. And Rebel Without a Crew Season 1 premieres Sunday, November 18th. Tune in to El Rey. Check it out. Watch Lucha Underground on El, on El Rey so that you can interact with D Rock, aka at Biopinic, on the Twitter. I am at Son of Us Escadero on the Twitter. <coughs> Danny is at Cardigan Vixen, aren't you? Yes. So if you want to see what crazy thing she's going to change her profile header name to, <laughs> okay? It's Halloween themed right now. She's been a. Uh, Coxwagger Inspector. Um, she's had haunted titties. She's she's had a lot of monikers through the years. Spooky noodles. Um, spooky, spooky noodles. Yeah. Zena. Okay, and check out our Instagram at Wonder Vlog and at Midnight Hounds. Oh, yes. At Midnight Hounds for cute pictures of Zena. I know Zena. I'm almost done with the ad. Zena's like, finish this ad so I can go out and play. Okay, I think that's it.